I've been posting videos on my main channel for a little over a year now, and it's crazy to me how many comments, DMs, and emails I've been getting from people asking how I make videos. Questions about things like lighting, editing, shooting, and just general questions about how to improve their videos and their channels. It's quite flattering. Look, I'm not an expert. I'm just a small creator like a lot of you, but I have picked up a thing or three over the last year, mostly through trial and error. So since I love YouTube and I love creating content, I thought I would make some videos over time where I talk about my approach to creating content as well as some specific videos on shooting and editing. One of the questions I get asked about the most consistently is how I shoot watches. So today I'll be talking about my approach to watch videography and photography. I won't be talking about macro in this video because that's a totally different subject. Though I am amenable to discussing it in a future video if I think there's enough of a demand for it. With that said, I won't be talking about my camera or my camera settings that much. I find that stuff super interesting, but I know that a lot of you are probably recording video on your phone or a completely different camera. So knowing what settings I use isn't particularly helpful. My goal here is to just give you some basic instructions so you can duplicate what I'm doing and apply it to whatever equipment you may have available, whether that's your iPhone, a vlogging camera like I'm recording on right now, or anything else in between. There are several different kinds of shots that you'll see every YouTuber, brand, or advertiser use in their videos. But today, I'm only gonna cover the two most popular, the hero or glamour shot and flat lays. And I'll also cover the lighting and setup for both. Let's start with a hero shot. You know what a hero or a glamour shot is, even if you've never heard that term before. It's a photo or video of a product, or in our case, a watch, where it showcases the subject in a way that makes you want to buy it or shows you how to use it. Typically with watches, these shots are done with the watch in the upright position, with good lighting revealing the watch with a slow pan in and or slow pan out. Personally, I love hero shots because there's so much room for creativity even though you're technically doing the same shot over and over again. Sometimes I play with my LEDs and I create this gradient effect with a piece of reflective acrylic. Or you could just do a simple desktop hero shot like this. But today, I'm just gonna show you how to recreate this basic reveal shot. This is a clip from my Brightlink video. The pan in was done in post-production through editing software, but it is a super easy shot to do and it looks way harder than it is. So here I have a basic cloth backdrop. I do recommend investing in some of these, especially if you're gonna be doing this kind of shooting consistently. They're much better than regular fabric because they tend to be a little bit thicker, they don't wrinkle, and they don't attract as much lint. Next, I have this vintage Lazy Susan, and I actually use this for a lot of the rotating shots that you see in some of my videos. So I place that on top of the backdrop and put one of my reflective acrylic pieces on top of that. This is what the watch is gonna sit on top of. They sell matte and shiny acrylic pieces. I'm using a shiny one here because it's gonna help reflect light upwards, illuminating the watch. Finally, I place my LED lights under the Lazy Susan and angle them towards the backdrop. This is gonna create some depth. Without getting too much into camera settings or what an f-stop is, and you can do this on your phone, you're just trying to make the watch the main focus point, which will make the background blurry or bokeh, giving you this beautiful glowy gradient effect. Now that you've got the basic setup done, all you have to do is set up the camera facing the watch dead on and place one of your studio lights directly above it. Then you create a shadow and slowly reveal the watch. You don't need anything fancy to create the shadow. Sometimes I use my gray card and sometimes I use a paper bag or whatever's handy. The one drawback here is that you can only do so much with this setup. The light overhead can be pretty harsh even if you have a diffuser on it. So this is where trial and error becomes paramount. You have to be making constant small adjustments in order to get the shot that you want and that can be pretty time consuming. This is the finished shot and this is what it looks like after I color graded and added some motion. If you don't know what those things mean, then I suggest you take whatever editing software you're using and do a deep dive on how to use it. There are innumerable videos out there about how to use editing software, and it's important to become knowledgeable about the software that you're using. I'm still learning new things about Premiere every day, and that's just one editing software. 
There's always hard work involved in any endeavor, and if this was easy, then everyone would be making great videos. Okay, now let's move on to flat lays. So there's a couple tricks when it comes to flat lays. For starters, I don't care what kind of camera you're using, even if that's your cell phone, you need something for overhead shots like a tripod. The trick is you want the camera lens to be parallel with the watch face. So this is a boom mic stand that I use for my mic in most of my videos. I also use it to hold my camera for flat lays so I don't always have to be using a tripod. I bought it for like 50 bucks on eBay and it's been so useful. Before then I found it incredibly difficult to get these professional looking shots and I was doing stuff like this which I don't think looks nearly as good. Next, you need lights. You may have to adjust the brightness depending on the watch, props, and the different surfaces you might be using may require more or less light. Again, this is gonna be a lot of trial and error. More often than not, a lot of error. But you have to have the discipline to do it over and over again until you get the shots that you want. A light box is optional. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. But if you're not going to use a light box, then your light source has to be diffused. Otherwise, you're going to get this harsh light that creates glare and unattractive shadows. Anyway, whether I'm using a light box or not, I like to set each of my studio lights on opposite sides of whatever space I'm working on. And if I am using my light box, then I'll use my ring light as well for additional light. Then I like to set up the flat lay. Most of the time I just use things from around the house and sometimes they have a theme, sometimes they don't. But the best piece of advice I can give you is to create depth. You can do this by adding different items at different heights. Also, don't be afraid to play around with texture. Sometimes I'll use different surfaces or I'll prop the watch up on several books because it makes the shot more visually interesting. I also like to create separation from the background by placing the watch on top of a couple bottle caps. This creates a little bit more depth between the background and the watch. It makes the watch the main focus of the shots. It also eliminates a lot of those shadows that you may end up with if the watch were sitting on the surface alone. Then the other tip I have for flat lays is to illuminate the dial, but without creating glare. The way that I do this without moving my studio lights around is I just use pieces of paper and white boxes to help bounce the light and illuminate, but without creating those harsh glare spots. And basically that's what you're trying to do with flat lays. You're trying to create depth and dimension, and you can do this by having different items at different heights and different textures. And then you're trying to illuminate the watch and the watch face without creating those harsh glare lines. Hopefully all of that made sense and you got something out of this video. I will admit that this project was a little bit of an undertaking for me just because I've never made this sort of content before, but I will get better and I did learn a lot with this project. I also purchased a fancy new microphone so I can start incorporating more voiceover and hopefully streamline some of the content on this channel as well as on my main channel. But anyway guys, welcome to my vanity project. This is my second channel where I post all things about editing, shooting, and of course tubing. So if you have a topic you'd like covered or a question you'd like answered, feel free to drop it in the comment section down below. All of my seasoned subs from my main channel know that I do respond to most, if not all, of your comments within the first 24 to 48 hours. And though that is becoming increasingly difficult on that channel, I have less to go through on this channel, so I'm much more likely to respond to all of your comments. Anyway, if any of that stuff sounds like something you'd be interested in, then I encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you know when I post new videos on this channel. But as always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.